Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for being here. My name is Andrew, coming to you from the beautiful Carolinas. Today's topic is going to be, what have you learned from the narcissistic relationship? Think about that for a minute. Everyone, if you like the content, please like, subscribe, and share. So, what have you learned from the narcissistic relationship? You have learned so many different things about humanity, about people about people that did have your best interest at heart and those that didn't, about what you wanted to achieve up to this point in life and that in fact you had roadblocks that were in your way but the roadblocks that you were looking at perhaps were maybe just passing a test or getting entry to a college or something. You didn't realize that there were people throughout your whole life trying to sabotage you and the narcissist again is at the top of this list. So. First of all, what did you realize? One of the things that you've learned post-narcissistic relationship is that not everybody has your best interest at heart. Not everybody thinks the way you think. Not everybody wants the things that you want. Many people will be envious of you. Many people will be jealous of you. Many people will try to throw hurdles or obstacles in your way to achieving your hopes, your dreams, your goals, your aspirations. Prime example, let's say that you were born into a narcissistic family, and let's say that nobody in the family had graduated college yet, or maybe one or two people did, who knows. But one of your parents is the narcissist, and they did not want you to graduate university for whatever reason. The point being, they probably threw a monkey wrench in there, telling you things like, you'll never amount to anything, why waste your time? Even if you did graduate, you're not gonna do anything with the degree. What's the big deal? Like, don't, you don't have to go to school. They will try to downplay it, or really to pepper you so you don't go to school. That is just one microcosm of an example. But that's one thing that you learned that perhaps even one of your parents is a narcissist, maybe even both of them are. Another thing you learned is maybe you were born into the narcissistic family again and let's say you were the scapegoat. Well, one of your siblings was the golden child which means they could do no wrong and you could not figure it out throughout your whole upbringing why that sibling was being treated better than you and why they didn't have any um, consequences for their actions. They didn't pay any price. They weren't scolded or reprimanded. They could just do whatever they wanted to. And if you didn't make your bed every morning at seven o'clock, like a military little uh, cadet, you would be scolded because you were being treated differently than they were. This wasn't right, it wasn't appropriate. That's not a way a parent should raise children. Both children or children in the family should be treated equally, just as all humans should be treated equally. But again, that's not what the narcissist sees. The narcissist does whatever they want and they favor people and they have people treated much better than other people, including their own kids. Another thing that you have learned post relationship, this is gonna be a big one, please understand this. One thing that you have done, I can assure you, is you have become your own detective. Now, what I mean by that is, first of all, let's say that the relationship ended and you got discarded or you ended it yourself, whatever it was. You couldn't take it anymore. There was a threshold, there was a breaking point, there was a line being drawn in the sand that you couldn't deal with it anymore because your resources were becoming decimated. Like I mentioned so frequently on videos, your health, social circle status, time, money, energy, effort, love, everything. The, these were getting really peppered. But what, what happened there? You became a detective because you had to type into the search engine or into YouTube or a browser, something like spouse won't talk to me and you couldn't figure out what, you were, what was gonna pop up but lo and behold, there came some narcissistic videos. Now maybe it didn't happen immediately, maybe it took you a few weeks. But when you figured it out, then you're like, wait, oh my gosh, now you uncovered something. something. You had to become your own inspector or detective to figure this out because nobody taught you this in school and nobody was telling you what your partner or spouse or mom or dad or aunt or uncle was. They couldn't wrap their head around what it was or they were the one themselves and they didn't want you to figure it out. Either way, you became a detective. Another uh, skill set that you acquired was you figured out rather quickly that going no contact and blocking the narcissist, deleting them and removing all flying monkeys and people associated with them is the path. That took you a while to figure it out, but when you did, then you said, yep, uh, blocking, maybe I'm an empath and it's hard for me to block somebody, but this is gonna serve me. I'm not gonna keep communication open just to serve somebody who I've been serving for years on end, maybe even decades. The gravy train is over. I am no longer serving anybody other than myself and I need to block them so I can heal, so I can slow my life down and save my money, save my health, save my time, my energy, everything about me. Rebuild is what you need to be doing. Another hat that you will wear, another thing that you will discover post-narcissistic relationship 
is that you will have to become your own accountant. Yes, maybe you were financially abused and the narcissist was withholding money from you and you did not even have a bank account with your name on it. You had to figure out rather quickly how to handle finances and that in fact the narcissist probably was squirreling away money throughout that whole relationship. They would act like they only had X number of dollars or the two of you only had X number of dollars per month but let's say that they were making a good amount of money and you know what it was. Well, maybe only a third of that was available to be used. What happened to the other two thirds? Well, think about foreign accounts, think about properties, think about tangible assets, think about them having different accounts under only their names. This is what the narcissist does. They financially abuse any opportunity they can get. That is what they do. Now, I'm not saying each and every narcissist does this, but if they have the opportunity, the narcissist loves money. And what do they love money? Then more than their own money, your money. And they think what is yours is theirs and what is theirs is theirs. But that's another thing, you had to become an accountant or you had to learn how to handle money. Another thing, just day-to-day -day responsibilities, you had to figure out that yes, in fact, post-narcissistic relationship, after time, after you healed, or you were well on the healing path, that going to the store was gonna be a very big challenge for you. Specifically, if you were going to the store where you used to go to the store with the narcissist. Now, just entering that store, it can be a really monumental task. I know what it's like, I had to do it myself. But when you actually dust yourself off, by the bootstraps and pick yourself up. My hope is that A, you're not going to that same store you went to with the narcissist. You go to a different store and at a different time, but you understand slowly that, hey, you can do the shopping. You can go get things done for yourself because you don't have somebody hanging over your shoulder telling you to, not to buy that item or no one's gonna eat that or what are you doing, that's not good. You don't have someone on your shoulder telling you how invaluable, sorry, how your choices are poor choices. So that's another thing. Another thing that you learn post-narcissistic relationship is that this, this wasn't just you. This has happened to millions, hundreds of millions of people all over the planet throughout time. And you are the latest person to acquire the wisdom, to get the wisdom, and to apply the tools to your life to slow your life down. Now, did you enter the narcissistic relationship knowing what that person was and what they were going to do to you? Of course you didn't. The narcissist did not give you the two-page report. They did not tell you who they were and that they were wearing a mask and manipulating you. So you had to really figure out that, wait, this wasn't my fault. I was taken advantage of. I was tricked and trapped and manipulated. And this was all an exercise for the narcissist to take as much from me as they possibly could. And they succeeded for a period of time until that relationship ended and until I put myself back together. And, that, and right now, most likely, the narcissist is on with the new supply or other sources of supply and extracting from those people. The cycle just continues on and on and on, but it must go on without you. Another role, another thing that you would have learned post-narcissistic relationship is that your support system had blown up. People that were in your immediate family or friends or colleagues or neighbors or associates, many of these people disappeared. And if you kept on or held on to any people throughout the ending of the narcissistic relationship, you're a fortunate person. Many people lose everybody. Some people lose a lot of people. Very few people stick around because for, in the aftermath of the narcissistic relationship, there's a huge void and you have to put yourself back together, which is another thing you learn about, which I'll explain right now. That void needs to be filled by you. It cannot be filled by the narcissist. It cannot be filled by talking to people who haven't gone through the narcissistic relationship because those people will get burned out. Now, I'm not suggesting don't communicate with people post-narcissistic relationship. That is not what I'm saying at all. I'm saying that understand, watch your words because you most likely are still in fight or flight or you haven't broken the trauma bond or you haven't even wrapped your head around what narcissism is yet. And if you're trying to discuss this with people that didn't go through the same experiences as you, they will get burned out. They're not gonna be able to wrap their head around what you're talking about. Other people that I'll, I will refer to when I say your support system blows up, these people listen to the smear campaign and they literally grabbed their popcorn and they got their beverage of choice and they watched your life implode and they listened to all the rhetoric and the nonsense that the narcissist told them about you and about what you did or didn't do. Now these people, again, many of them are flying monkeys, many of them are narcissists themselves, many of them are toxic. They'll get their day, just like everybody. Every single person, every one of us on the planet reveals ourselves in time and the narcissist is no different, the flying monkeys are no different and the people that grab their popcorn are no different. Again, I don't wish ill will upon anybody. I have never done that in my life and I'm not gonna start now. I'm simply suggesting, because this is a fact of life, that life is not linear and the healing path is not linear and people's lives go sideways each and every day. What you have today could easily disappear tomorrow. 
and what your hopes and dreams and your aspirations were on the goals that you're trying to look for. Maybe tomorrow some of these people wake up and they realize that they married the narcissist or that their child is a narcissist or that a colleague or a friend is one. Again, I do not go walking around the globe looking for narcissism, quite the opposite. I am sharing with you my insight, my wisdom post-narcissistic relationship, what I have learned, and my hope is with some of the tools and some of the learnings that you have acquired as well. Another thing you would have figured out is that your hobbies, some of them have returned, maybe even all of them. Maybe you've left all the hobbies from the past in the past and you've started new ones, or maybe you've dug up some old ones from the past and you've started them again. This is a great sign of growth. This is a great sign of doors opening up for you. Let's take an example. Let's say you like to go surfing or skiing. Okay, well, you, you did that frequently before you met the narcissist. You met them and you found out you weren't surfing or skiing at all. As a matter of fact, you weren't exercising barely at all because the narcissist would tell you, who does that? It's not cool. What's the big deal? Like, you don't want to be doing that. They would plant seeds of doubt in your head why you shouldn't be doing it. Then you are in the narcissistic relationship and it ends. Maybe you got discarded or you, you kicked them to the curb either way. And then after a period of growth, of slowness, of rebuilding and, and understanding that that relationship was a challenging relationship to say the least, but it's not in your life any longer, then you went back out on the ski slope or you went back out on the surfboard and you said, wait a minute, I can do this again and I feel like myself and this is great. This is fantastic. That's what life is like without the narcissist over your shoulder telling you everything negative and giving you the silent treatment and gaslighting you and stonewalling you and overtaking your household and overtaking your money and overtaking your relationships and overtaking your life and overtaking your core. The narcissist wants to take anything and everything from people that they possibly can. This is what they do. It's on a loop. The narcissistic abusive cycle just goes around and around. And once you've identified that you are in or were in a narcissistic relationship, you need to find an exit plan and you need to really understand that staying in that relationship one more day longer than you need to once you know that they're a toxic person is one day too long because you were manipulated and take advantage of possibly for months, years, decades, maybe even a lifetime. And then one day you got that light bulb moment and you said, wait, everyone else is being treated so differently than me and this person is treating me like I'm really not even a human being. What's going on? Then you get, there you go. That could be a first light bulb moment. But all of these things I'm sharing with you, you will discover so much about yourself and you will really understand that all the toxicity of the narcissistic relationship, it was from one person. It was from the narcissist. Now, did the narcissist have other toxic people perhaps in their immediate family? Probably, very good chance. Did the narcissist family know that, they, that the person you were involved with was a narcissist? Yes, I'll tell you right now, they did. Did they know the term and the definition? Probably not, but maybe. But you see, narcissism is built from within the, the four walls of the household. That's where it starts. And many times the parents of the narcissist are the narcissist themselves, but many times they're not. I'm just suggesting to you that one never knows how one will grow up, no matter what support they were or were not given. Some people that I work with during one-on-one -on -one sessions did not have the best upbringing in their household. And those people turned out to be some of the most intelligent, wisest, kindest, empathetic people I've ever met. Other people have had some of the best households to, to be brought up in. I'm one of them. I had a fantastic household. It was Disney-esque, if you will. And I turned out the way I turned out. But the point is you can't, you, you are gonna be created and developed the way your environment is around you, but ultimately it's your choice. So what I'm saying there is you put your pants on the same way I do, you put your sneakers on the same way I do. So does a narcissist. They make a decision every single day to be a good person or not to be a good person. And that's another thing you learned along the way, that not everybody does the right thing. Many people do the right thing when other people are looking. Few people do the right thing when nobody is looking. Understand what I'm sharing with you. What I'm, what, what I'm trying to suggest there, and I hope I said that right because there was a loud noise. What I'm saying is do the right thing always, no matter if someone's watching you or not. It doesn't matter. Just do the right thing. Take the high road. Be a good person. Be the exact opposite of the narcissist. Don't donate money to a organization because you wanna post it on social media. Donate because that you have a couple extra dollars and you wanna donate and you don't need to get accolades for it. That's the path. The path is leaving the narcissist in the past and taking the lifelong learning lessons and applying them to present day. But the things that you have learned post-narcissistic relationship, they are insurmountable. Watch this one. Are you in the third version of yourself yet? the strongest, most galvanized version of yourself known to humankind? I am. 
and I know so many of you are, or you're entering it, that's where the abundance happens. That's where the doors open up for you. That's where the possibilities are presented right in front of you. That's when you can fall in love again. That's when you can build new friendships. That's when you can take a class, teach a class, read a book, write a book. That's when you can travel the world. That's when you slow your life down and you do what you want, when you want, and with whom you want, because you don't have the narcissist in the background. You don't have their voice chattering in your ear telling you that you're not good or that they shouldn't have married you or no one will love you or you'll never find anybody like them or you're so weak or what's your problem or go see a therapist or I knew you had problems or nobody likes you. you you don't hear any of those words any longer and those words dissipate over time now time is not the answer time is not the the healing answer post narcissistic relationship it certainly helps but the answer is digging in deep ripping off the band-aids healing childhood wounds processing what part you played in the relationship. Were you a people pleaser? Were you a yes person? Could you say no, the strongest word in the English language? Did you have boundaries? Were you, are you an empath? Were you vulnerable when you met the narcissist? Did you overshare? All of these things and more. Remember, when you first met the narcissist, you probably were any and or all of those aforementioned things. And the narcissist was just listening to every word you shared and they were keeping it in the back of the brain to weaponize it against you at a later date. So that's another thing you learned post narcissistic relationship we don't overshare we now have boundaries if we have energy vampires flying around us trying to consume our energy let's say on a Tuesday night at six o'clock or eight o'clock or Friday night at five o'clock and somebody wants to call us up and say hey just give me a few minutes of your time and that turns into three hours next thing you know our whole evening is gone and we didn't even eat dinner after work yet uh, those days are long over because life is too short and again no one's guaranteed to be here tomorrow and the energy vampire what they do is they feed off of your empathy they feed off of your ear listening to them you never get a word in edgewise to the energy vampire the energy vampire just wants to talk 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 dump all their toxicity onto you so they get it out verbally that that is and then as soon as you try to say one word hey oh and I was good I was thinking about then they say hey gotta go talk to you later bye or oh sorry gotta go boil an egg They'll say things like that and they'll hang up on you or they just won't listen to you or they'll give you th one word things like, mm, yeah, uh, and then you're thinking to yourself, what kind of relationship is this? Well, the energy vampire relationship is a relationship that's built for you to be a sounding board, for you to be a somebody to listen to them and to give them feedback if they want it. But more importantly, it's just like a cesspool for them to dump on you. That's why you slow your life down and you weed out all these people. And post-narcissistic relationship, many people have already weeded themselves out of your life. Like I mentioned, fly monkeys and people that grab their popcorn, etc. Anyone that's stuck around and checked in on you, most likely they're a good person. And, and now you're developing or creating new relationships and you're discovering who you really are. So that's why and how you enter the third version of yourself. The third version is a version of abundance. It's a place where the narcissist could never, ever, ever, not only fathom, but get to. Because the narcissist is stuck in that low vibrational state, that quagmire state, lower than your shoe. They can never elevate. For a period of time, they did steal your beautiful, bright, shining light. And they did capture you physically, mentally, emotionally, financially, spiritually, every way possible. That's just what they did. There's no other way to look at it. But once you broke free or if you were discarded, then your energy naturally returns in time and the narcissist shifts that back down into that low vibrational state because that's their natural state. Your natural state is up here. It's higher than the stars. It's higher than the sun. That's why you are who you are. And that's why you have beaten the narcissistic relationship. And that's why the narcissist saw you and they wanted to target you in the very beginning because they saw how beautiful you were internally and externally. And they did not like what they saw. They were envious and jealous of you. They tried to extinguish you and your beautiful bright shining light but they couldn't do it. That's why you're here in the community. That's why you understand there are so many things you will learn post-narcissistic relationship. You will become your own doctor, meaning you will, you know the physical ailments you went through. You'll become your own therapist at times, meaning you're gonna have to, there'll be plenty of times, and I do it every day on my walking meditation. I talk to myself and I meditate and I practice gratitude and thankfulness and I am, like I am beautiful, I am abundant. This is the path. These are the things you couldn't do when you were with the narcissist. And all of these things add up to one thing, to your liberation, to your freedom, to your future narcissist free. Everyone, I hope you liked the video. I loved doing it from the beautiful Carolinas. This is Andrew, namaste. Have a great afternoon, evening, or morning, no matter where you are on the planet, you are not alone. Remember that you are not alone. 
God bless you all. I love you. Have a great afternoon and I'll talk to you tomorrow. And remember, there are so many things you learn. You have to become your own security system. You have to become your own doctor. You have to become your own accountant. You have to be become your own detective. Sometimes you have to become your own lawyer or representative. You have to become your own researcher. There are so many things you have to do post-narcissistic relationship. Drop comments below if any and or all of these words resonate with you. I love you all. God bless you and I'll talk to you tomorrow. All right, bye guys.